Hi everybody, this is Dr. James Morgan and today I will be speaking with you regarding Typhon. Typhon is your clinical data entry system. So for those of you that are already familiar with Typhon, sit back, relax and enjoy. For those of you that do have a Typhon login specifically from your time here at Brandman University, uh, you've already been familiar with this. Now it's important that you'll take advantage of remembering how to change default settings and all those things. For those of you that might be familiar with Typhon but have, do not have a Typhon login through Bramman University, or for those of you that have no clue of what Typhon is, this one is especially for you. Now at this point, everybody should have had access to Typhon. For those that already have a login, nothing's changed with the exception of the things that you're gonna be doing uh, specifically for the psych mental health uh, rotations. For those of you that feel like you don't have access, I've gotten everybody out an email that was already registered uh, through through their uh, uh, advice or advising by the beginning of or excuse me by mid April. So if you if you did not receive an email, uh, maybe because if you're a late add-on, um, please make sure that you're reaching out to me. Uh, at the same time, if those that don't have access but maybe did get an email, not sure if you got an email, didn't check your spam folder, uh, I will be able to resend out everybody's um, login information. Now, it's important to know though that one, the email is coming from Typhon and it's going straight to your Brandman University email. If for some reason you received it but didn't uh, click on the link, the temporary password is time sensitive. So if anyone that needs to have it resent, please reach out to me. My contact information will be noted at the end of this. Uh, and just remember that it's, once it's resent, uh, it is that temporary password does have a, uh, I believe it's a 24, 48 hour time sensitivity to it. So it's important you stay on top of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through uh, step by step on what you need to do to uh, get everything set up for your psych mental health rotations in Typhon that you will also uh, have access to this PDF. Uh, if at this, by the time you're listening to this, uh, if you're burnt out, but you'll also be able to use the, the PDF version uh, as a resource going through. So clicking on the link from your Blackboard shell will bring you to the student data entry login. So it's important that you're keeping in mind that it is the student data entry login. If for some reason uh, you're typing in the, the, um, the link or the, the uh, the URL um, from a, without clicking it through the uh, Blackboard shell, just keep in mind that you make sure that you're using, uh, you're trying to log in under advanced practice. So your account number, everyone's account number is 3130, 3130. Your user login will have been in that initial email and the password uh, will be the one that you're gonna make sure that you're setting up uh, once you have access. So remember, make sure you're under the student data uh, entry login and all preceptor and sites will be uploaded once everything is approved by your program director and you have uh, clinical clearance from Cheryl. Again, I'll give you all that information again at the end along with all contacts. So once you log in, you will have your um, dashboard here. So a few things that I want you to keep in mind. First thing you should do is set up your default choices. The reason why we want to set up your default choices is which will make sense here momentarily is that way it'll decrease the amount of extra uh, things that you need to type in uh, each time you do a data entry for each patient. So by clicking that you're going to want to click um, up at the top there uh, semester. This is the summer semester. Now keep in mind uh, in Typhon anything that has a red arrow is something that is required just to be able to to get everything uploaded. Now of course there's going to be some extra information that you'll need to put in uh, that is required for the uh, class itself. So the semester will be summer, your course will be NURU 643, that is clinical one for 
uh, psych mental health. So as you click on the, the drop down menu, uh, it'll have all of the available courses at Bramman University uh, for the nursing program. But make sure you are clicking on NURU 643, which will be the PMHNP Clinical 1. Then on the drop down menu for preceptor and clinical site, you will find your preceptor and clinical site. Now, if you do this and you don't see your preceptor or your clinical site, then that means that what you, there's something that has not been uploaded, um, or maybe it's uploaded, just it's pending uh, the final approval of your clinical site, and that, that will all be from Cheryl Trobiani. Now, the other optional uh, defaults here, I usually leave uh, empty because uh, this will just depend on what's going on for the day. So every time you open up a new uh, entry, this will make sense. Now, same thing, when you, once you are completed with all 255 hours uh, for NUR 643, and then you start to work on your next course, you want to go back through to your defaults and change the course number. That way you get uh, the, all the hours that you're doing goes to the appropriate course. Now, if you have multiple preceptors or different clinical sites, uh, just make sure that you use the drop down menu each time uh, that you, you do your entries. And of course, at the bottom, make sure you click save data when you are complete. Then back to your dashboard, you want to change your password here at this link uh, as needed. So uh, if you forget your password, I'll have to resend everything um, uh, to you in order to, to re-log in. However, uh, so I will not have access to um, your password. So actually, if anything, when you go in, you can always click forgot password. Um, but if you, in the middle of this, ever need to change your password, this is where you'll do it. The blank case log worksheet, just use this as a reference if you choose. And this is what it looks like. And basically it's a worksheet that you, it'll be all the things that need to be required uh, once we, you start adding uh, patient information. Now in the beginning when I first started, I printed out a bunch of these things and I'm thinking I'm just gonna put all of these for every patient that I see. But what happens is of course, if you're seeing quite a few different patients, uh, this can become, uh, extra paperwork that you have to do and then your clinical lab pocket starts to get really, really heavy. So if this is something that you wanna at least maybe print out one of them, by all means. Uh, once you get an, uh, used to doing this, then you'll know exactly uh, all the information that you'll need to put in. Uh, end up, what I ended up doing was just making a blank piece of paper that I was able to fold into my pocket and I was able to then put all the pertinent information that I needed in order to go back and to upload all this information. The next link under uh, the downloads is common ICD and CPT codes. I will be able to show you in there where uh, you'll be able to do a quick search, but if you wanted to have um, information in terms of the common ICD codes, uh, here are all of them uh, per specialty. So top 500 for the ICD and CPT list uh, for psych mental health. Again, this is just a reference. Now, if you have any IT issues specific to Typhon, you want to click uh, support tickets under the link there. Making sure that you're using the appropriate browsers, uh, you have internet connection, all those good things. Uh, if you have any questions in terms of uh, what the requirements for Typhon, uh, then I'll give you a good all of the re resources that you need at the end. But if there's any IT issues, uh, something that any of your clinical instructors will not be able to help you with from a systems perspective, uh, here is your where you can uh, submit a support ticket. Okay, moving on to everything that you'll be doing. So the first thing that I recommend is to do to, to click my time logs. Now what this is, why I say to do it in this order specifically, is this way it allows every time you enter a new case log or patient information, it'll be able to go to a time 
period that you've already set up. If you do it the reverse way by putting all your patient uh, information in, uh, you're going to get a lot of red flags to where you're going to have to go back and click through each entry uh, to put your specific uh, date of your clinical rotation. So I recommend that you click my time logs first. And then by clicking add a daily time log, and you'll do this each time that you go into your clinical site. You'll need to uh, put in the, the date of your time log, and this will be the date, so basically your shift or your clinical rotation, where you put that in. So you'll put the date um, of the specific times that you're gonna be putting in for uh, each clinical shift. Now it's important to note that you need to input all of your information no later than seven days from your actual shift for a few reasons. One, after, after the seven day period, you won't be able to go back and enter any information, which then will mean the time that you put in, there's a, a highly, well, the chances are very high that uh, those hours won't be accepted um, by your clinical instructor, and then those will be lost hours. So you don't wanna waste any time here. So then you'll already see under your course and then your preceptor, those will already be filled based off the default settings that you've already put in. So you'll see here, that's why it's important that you keep, um, or I would at least recommend that you put everything into the default section. That way, every time you do this, you don't have to, that's, those are two extra clicks that you don't have to do. But again, make sure that every time, uh, once you go into the next course, or if you have a different uh, preceptors, that you're making sure that uh, your default settings are appropriate. So then once those are filled, you'll click continue. And then here is where you'll put in your hours. So this is again where we are putting, um, where we are from the back end, where we are looking at to make sure that you have 255 hours per term uh, for the hour requirement. So you'll put your total shift time. So if your shift was eight hours, it's eight hours. If it was 10 hours, it was 10 hours. Uh, anything that you'll have already had set up and discussed with your current clinical instructor or that you will be discussing by this point uh, with your current clinical instructor. So one thing I would do wanna keep in mind and I, I recommend here is if you're there for eight hours and 15 minutes, give yourself, the, give yourself every minute that you are there, uh, but specifically working with patients and your preceptor. Now, this, just think of it as if this was your job. If you, if you log in and then you take some time to get to the unit, get your coffee and get things set up, and by the time you actually see your first patient, it's been an hour, well, that hour is not gonna count, correct? Of course, we all wanted to, but think of it from an administration perspective. Your uh, direct supervisor might be coming down to talk with you uh, if those are hours that uh, are not productive. On the same token, say you're done with all your patient information, but then you're sitting around just kind of chit-chatting with everybody and taking your sweet time to, uh, to get off the unit, those hours won't count. So make sure that uh, you're giving yourself one every minute that you are, are, are working with uh, patients in your clinical uh, preceptor, uh, but at the same time being cautious that, uh, you know, not to, to take advantage of this because uh, we will be in contact with your uh, preceptor that you're working with. And at the same time, we do have, um, from the instructor perspective, we have uh, access to see every time you've accessed it, how often uh, you've been in, when you put in hours, and if you ever go back to change hours. So that's important to know that from an academic integrity perspective, which I'll uh, cover again, uh, just to make sure that you're logging all of your accurate hours. Okay, so then after that, you'll click save data, and then you'll see that you'll have uh, your time log has been added. So you'll see the date, the course, the preceptor um, of, and then down at the bottom there, or at the, the far right, your shift time. Every time you put this in, it'll have a running tally of all of your totals uh, for each course that you're putting in. Okay, so now it's time to add a new case log. So this is for your patient input. Uh, you'll put add new case log. 
a date of encounter, you'll choose the date and time that you've already just previously logged uh, that we just covered. So that's why it's important that you want all of your patient uh, entries to go to the appropriate times that you are that you're logging because uh, here is how you're going to be able to justify your time so you put the date in and then click save data and then you'll be brought uh, to this section here so at the top here uh, you'll see student information you'll say semester the course your preceptor and the clinical site these are all something that you've set from your default so again you can see how especially as once you start getting into all these things, how uh, tedious this might be. So it's important to keep your defaults there. Then you'll put the age of your uh, patient, uh, gender, the time with your patient, uh, type of decision-making, student participation, et cetera, which we're gonna go through each one. And again, remember everything in red is uh, what is required and the basic information that's gonna be needed for every patient that you see. Okay, so clinical information. So your time with the patient, the type of decision making. So here's the drop down. So straightforward, low complexity, moderate complexity, high complexity. And really what this will come down to is the type of, this will also help you with your, your, um, your building codes. Student participation, uh, observation only, less than shared shared 50 50 or if you were primary now in the beginning you might have some op just observation only just depending on how you have it set up uh, with your preceptor and the comfort level of your preceptor the goal is throughout your time of all your 255 hours it's it's expected that you're going to go from observation only uh, to then less than shared shared then up to primary to where at some point at the at the uh, end of the term, you'll have more primary than you'll have anything else. Now, kind of word to the wise, if any of you are feeling that your preceptor is not giving you the clinical experience that you were expecting, meaning they're just having you observe only uh, more times than not, then it's important that you're reaching out to your um, clinical instructor uh, through your, so that's the NURU 643, uh, to express, let you know, let your clinical instructor know that you're having some issues with your preceptor. Okay, so then um, moving on. So reason for the visit. Um, this is the same system that every um, every um, program that we have here uh, uses. So if you're doing a new admit, new consult, um, is it a nursing home visit, initial visit, so you're doing a psyche valve, uh, so this is where you'll want to put the, um, the reason for the visit. Chief complaint is what you will type in. So again, based off of what the patient uh, says of why they are there. And when it comes to documentation, uh, that'll be something that you'll be learning specifically here um, during this course. Now, it's important for those that just finished the NURU 604 Advanced um, Health Assessment you'll know that medical documentation is different from a psych mental health documentation. So uh, this way you'll be able to keep, um, to know the differences. Okay, so encounter number. The encounter number uh, is based off, how, is this the first patient of the day? Second through the fifth, sixth through 10th, et cetera, et cetera. So this is every time you're going in for that particular shift, is which encounter number is it for this particular patient uh, and for that particular day. Okay, and then for uh, type of history and physical, is it problem focused, expanded problem focused, detailed uh, or comprehensive? So if you look between the type of decision making and the type of history and physical, uh, this will also help uh, you just determine which uh, code that you would be using for billing um, among everything else that uh, you will also learn. Okay, so then over on the uh, side where you'll need to put in your uh, ICD-10 diagnosis code, you need to at least do one. I defer to your 
your uh, clinical instructor if there's others that will be required. Now, if people, here's the thing, again, keeping in mind that more information that you put here, the more that you'll be able to, a uh, report that you'll be able to run at the end of the program, which could be helpful for job interviews, especially if you're coming straight out uh, as a new practitioner, specifically in uh, psych mental health. So a few things you, you can do is you can uh, click the the, uh, the uh, magnifying glass and you can search by ICD-10 uh, the name or the keywords. So for example, uh, major depressive disorder. Anything with a yellow icon are the common ones that are used, uh, but it will give you a list of anything that has major depressive disorder or any keyword that you put in there. And that way you can click um, the blue link there to click um, this, the appropriate code. At the same time, it's important, especially if the ones, if you're doing some of the same codes over and over and over again, uh, you'll to try to keep them uh, committed to memory. Uh, you can also at the same time put in the appropriate code, the F, like for example, if it was um, major depressive disorder, single episode in partial remission, F32.4, you can go in there under uh, the appropriate number there, type that in, and then at the, at the end, you can click validate codes and it'll give, give you a green, a green light basically saying that it's an appropriate code. Now, if you're in a hurry or maybe you're putting in the wrong codes, uh, it'll click, you'll um, click validate codes and it'll be red. So you have to go back and look at that. On the back end from your instructor's perspective, it's important that um, you know that you, those particular hours and those charts won't be approved. You'll have to go back and edit them uh, if your codes are not accurate. Uh, then same thing for your CPT billing codes. And you'll learn those um, specific to depending on the, the unit that you're working on. Uh, so this is important that you're also having this conversation with your preceptor. So if you're working in a uh, outpatient clinic versus say maybe an inpatient or intensive outpatient or prior, a partial hospitalization or wherever you're working at uh, to talk to them about the type of codes that they're using. Then under medications, uh, under psychiatric, here you can click the, which class of medication you're prescribing. And then under clinical notes, here is where you will type or copy and paste your text for your clinical notes. And now I will keep, in, this is where you'll be basically putting your SOAP notes and I'll give you all the details of what's required at the end of this. And again, you can always refer back to your syllabus and to, the, um, to your clinical instructor. But here's where you'll put all of that information. Then once that's done, you'll click save data after logging all the required information by your uh, program. Now, let's just say, for example, maybe you forgot to click save. The nice thing about this Typhon system is, uh, of course, you don't always wanna rely on this, but if say there's something missing from, let's go back. <laughs> save from something uh, that's required. So maybe you didn't put in an ICD-10 code. Well, and then you click save data. What will happen is that there's gonna be missing information and this will be uh, highlighted saying however many cases uh, that you have information missing. So it's important that um, you keep an eye on this and then by clicking the missing information link, it'll go to the um, any case uh, entries that have missing information. So it's kind of a nice um, backup just in case. Okay, so then once you have all these done, now at the end of the program, you can run a report based off semester or course of, uh, and you can do however many um, in, in, uh, data entries and uh, filters that you wanna put in of, to, to help you have a full report of everybody that you saw. So the more information you put, the more information that will be available uh, to this uh, tracking system. So you can see how many cases were entered, how many unique patients that you saw, uh, and unique patients being uh, ones that aren't linked together. So if say, for example, you're working in a, in a hospital system and you're rounding on them uh, two or three days in a row, uh, you can click your, you can kind of link them all together. 
it's not super important if you don't want that's more just for your own information um, and then it'll give you kind of these cool graphs now why would this be important well part of this is because uh, especially if you're going to out into a very uh, competitive job market the first thing that they're gonna say or try to of course get you down on, uh, on negotiating your uh, your terms of your agreement is oh you're a new grad now here we are again back to being a new grad so although we're all coming out uh, with our terminal degree as a DNP um, same time especially if you're a new psych mental health nurse practitioner uh, this might be useful in your negotiations because you can give uh, objective data of specifically where you did your clinical rotations uh, you can even show them obviously your grades and uh, preceptor feedback but this is showing that you can say well I saw X amount of of patients ages from whatever to whatever and and any ever, other information that you might want to uh, break down. So this is just a small sample of something that was kind of quickly put together a long time ago, but this way um, you can see how all this information, not only to get through your coursework here to f make sure that you're justifying all of your hours, at the same time this is gonna be used by any of our creditors uh, to make sure that um, everything was done appropriately, but this is something that you can take with you and use as objective data. Okay, so specifically for this uh, immersion, Dr. William Midas uh, has said that you can claim 20 hours for your clinical credit for immersion. So when you go through, and we can uh, do this here momentarily, you'll be able to enter Dr. William Midas as your preceptor with Brandman University as your clinical site. You can claim one clinical credit for each COPE group therapy session that you attend. So since there's a total of eight sessions, you can do a total of eight hours and then get with your clinical instructor to determine uh, if they want you to do it all at the end or it, uh, each individual hour uh, that you put in. So, uh, so type on requirements. Again, everything needs to be done within seven days of your clinical day uh, being recorded. So here's where it's super important here, well, among everything else, right? For the first 30 clinical hours with patients, every shift you must do three full and complete SOAP notes and enter basic, all the basic required uh, data fields for all of your patients seen, okay? So if you see 12 patients uh, in your first clinical day, Three of them, you're going to put in all the basic required data fields and full three detailed and complete SOAP notes, okay? So that's, if you saw 12, uh, the first three, uh, you can choose the three uh, that you'll do three full SOAP notes, uh, and then the remainder uh, nine, you'll just do the basic required data field, so everything with a red arrow, um, without a SOAP note um, will be requirement for the first 30 clinical hours with patients. So make sure that you um, kind of keep track of your hours in that respect, because then after the, th the first 30 hours that, that, again, they have to be approved by your clinical instructor. Because uh, <clears throat> the idea of, as your clinical instructor is going through, they'll give you feedback on your notes uh, to make sure that everything's accurate. So then after your 30 hours, uh, what will change is you must document one full SOAP note per shift and enter each basic required data field. So it's gonna go from three SOAP notes for the first 30 hours to one SOAP note per shift, plus all the basic required data fields uh, for all of your patients seen. So a few important reminders, patient entries will remain pending until the required SOAP notes are entered for that day and the basic required data for all patients seen for that day are entered. Once the patient notes are entered and the SOAP notes are done for each day, the clinical instructor will approve all notes for that day and the uh, corresponding time log entries, of course, barring any other uh, things that might need to be updated before they're approved. And keep in mind your clinical instructor will check Typhon about one to two times per week. This way it gives you time to get everything uploaded. 
Okay, so who to contact? So for Typhon Access, that would be myself, and here is my uh, email address. And again, you'll have this uh, in a PDF that you can go back to refer to. For any clinical site or preceptor information that needs to be uploaded into Typhon, that will come from Cheryl Trobiani. But keep in mind, this stuff will not be uploaded until you have clinical site approval by your program director. So you, at this point, you, everyone should have already submitted that appendices um, with the, the approval of Dr. William Midas. And the site agreement is in place along with your castle branches up to date. Um, all that stuff needs to be done. So you'll have an email from Cheryl saying you have full and complete clinical clearance. Um, and then that's when your preceptor information uh, will be uploaded. Many times what she'll do is she'll put the information in and have it pending. So if all this stuff is still, is basically approved and your everything's done, but you still don't see your clinical uh, preceptor or uh, clinical site, uh, then make sure you reach out to Cheryl uh, for that information. So all other clinical questions or Typhon requirements, basically everything we went over today, contact your clinical, um, clinical instructor, so your NURU, 643 instructor. Uh, if any of those questions are not answered by any of the above contacts, then please contact Dr. William Midas uh, at the email there. Okay, so quickly, wanted to go through, when you go, uh, once you log in, again, you want to make sure you go to set up all your default choices. So for example, uh, here we'll do a summer and then here in URU 643. So if you wanna put in your immersion hours, your preceptor will be Dr. William Midas. So from this long list here, you'll find Dr. William Midas. And then your clinical site will be Brandman University. This way, this will be a justification that these are specific to uh, non-patient, one-on-one um, -on -one time that you're gonna be having at your clinical site, but this is for immersion specifically. saving your data. Then I'm going to go over to my time logs, add a daily time log. So here, since we'll be doing it today, if uh, say if it was yesterday, then you'll be able to go back up to seven days to your um, clinical rotation. And here we already have our defaults pre-selected. I'll click continue. And since Dr. William Minus is uh, allowing 20 hours uh, for this immersion, uh, you'll put your 20 hours there. This is the same place that again, you're gonna put uh, your uh, eight hours for COPE or the one hour each individual, depending on how you have it set up with your clinical instructor for COPE. So 20 hours for immersion. Save the data. And here you'll see uh, today's entry in, uh, with all the information and the, the shifts. So then what you'll see though, uh, down at the bottom here is a, a, a calculated, uh, all of your hours calculated and a running total each time. So for those of you that were in and you are six, you are four, uh, you'll see all your hours there. Um, and then if you wanted to do a running total for each of your uh, 643 and 645, that's, that'll be there. But if you do all, it'll be every hour that you put in. Okay, so now that we have our time log added, we'll go back to the main menu. And we'll add a new uh, case log. And I'm gonna put in the date uh, for the time entry that we just put in. Save the data. And again, here's all of my default information. So for example, we have a 45 year old here. You can of course put days, weeks, and months. Uh, however, I don't think any of us will be working with anyone um, in the month, week, or day uh, category. Here's the, the, the option for gender. So we'll say a 45 year old male. Uh, time with the patient, we'll say, it was, say 30 minutes, type of decision making, we'll say moderate complexity. My student participation, we'll say I was the primary uh, provider, 
reason for the visit was, we'll say, a new consult. Uh, chief complaints say that maybe the patient says, I'm depressed. And this was my first encounter for the day. My type of uh, history and physical, I did uh, problem focused. Any social problems that you address? Again, this is not a requirement. However, more things that you click here uh, can be specific to that, that information, that report that you are able to run at the end. So we'll say maybe the grief, and then maybe we talked about uh, some interpersonal relationship issues that they might be having that may be causing their grief, um, etc. So then over here, the ICD-10 code. So if you click on the magnifying glass here, you can choose by category. This long list here, you can also then put in the keyword. So we'll say major depression. Click search. If you only want the most common ICD, you can do the filter here if you'd like, and then click search again. So maybe uh, we'll, we can say that um, F33.1, the recurrent moderate. If you know the ICD-10 code, what you can do is put it in yourself, point one, and then down here you can click that validate code. So you wanna make sure you get that green light for any codes that you're putting in. And then uh, CPT billing codes. You can uh, click the name, so you can do office, initial, um, you can also click the hourglass here to get the more common ones, but what I would recommend is to discuss this uh, not only with, within the program, uh, but also with your clinical instructor. So we can say then maybe we 992, for validate the codes this is a new patient three components comprehensive obviously comprehensive uh, history so it's important that then what I was mentioning earlier is making sure that everything kind of matches up in terms of what kind of exam did you do um, in terms of uh, history and physical so if you're putting some moderate complexity however you only did a problem focused history and physical maybe this code isn't appropriate uh, so just something to keep in mind there. Um, there's also definitely a lot of resources that will be brought up uh, depending upon, uh, in terms for billing, you know, is it inpatient, outpatient, et cetera. <clears throat> okay, so then down here under medications, psychiatric, maybe we discussed or maybe even prescribed um, antidepressants. Here, if you wanted to put in the amount of over-the-counter drugs they're putting in, the, the number of uh, medications that they're currently pre being prescribed and anything that you prescribe this visit, you can put that there. And then your clinical notes here. Okay, so then save your data. And then over here under view and edit case logs, will be anything that you've you've put in. So here it'll show the semester, the course, the, the clinical site, and the preceptor. And you'll see here the status is pending. So this will remain pending uh, until your clinical instructor goes in to approve it. But if you wanted to see, um, here's any of what your notes look like. And then you can click on the link here to show everything that you put in. Okay, so th then back to your main menu. You can also look uh, at your time logs here. And here you'll also see the approval status of your hours. But once, once they're, if they're pending, you can go in and there, you can adjust it. But again, let me keep, let me preface this again. From an academic integrity, it's important that e this is also included with uh, logging inaccurate hours. So here, so this is where you'll see the last time that it was edited from your perspective. On the back end, we can see when they were first put in and the last and in a log every time that you go in to potentially update uh, any of your clinical information. So it's important that you know that uh, 
if you're falsifying your clinical hours, not only are we contacting with your uh, preceptor, we're having the evaluations, um, as well as uh, phone calls and even some FaceTimes. So we're being able to look at everything that you log, uh, including if anything that's uh, changed. So it's important, very, very important that you understand the Bramman University's academic integrity uh, policies uh, to make sure that that you don't um, accidentally falsify something uh, that might be looked at as an academic, <coughs> excuse me, academic integrity violation. Now, um, going back to the approval status, if it's once it's uh, approved, uh, denied, what have you, then you won't be able to go back in to update it until you have your your clinical instructor's approval to go back in and, and to change it. But once it's approved, that means your hours are are approved, and you all, as well as your case. Um, uh, case entries. So that is it. I appreciate your time. I know this is uh, unforeseen times and uh, not the the face-to-face -face experience that you may have been looking for that we, or we wanted to provide at this time, uh, but we will be seeing you back uh, hopefully uh, at some point. But again, Thank you so much for your time and, and uh, understanding during this uh, this time. And you know, congratulations on your on your journey this far. Congratulations on uh, continuing this, uh, especially during these um, interesting times during the world. But it, one way of looking at it is, uh, one, you're on the front lines. Uh, you're part of you're part of of history. Maybe not the history that we uh, wanted to be part of, but if anything, it'll be an interesting chapter in your book one day. So. This is Typhon, uh, everything to know about Typhon. Again, who to contact, anything with Typhon access, that'll be myself. Anything with uh, preceptor or site information, that'll be Cheryl Trobiani. Uh, anything that's to do with clinical questions or Typhon requirements. Of course, I have a misspelling on this, gosh darn it. We're gonna update that here. And uh, that'll be your NURU 643. Uh, instructor, and then any questions that aren't answered by any of the above contacts, that'll be Dr. William Minus, your program director. Have a great rest of your immersion and be safe.